Calling all detectives. Everybody has the right to visit a doctor. But when seven hoodlums all bring sore throats to the same doctor, then something peculiar is happening. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, Private Detective. When you're a private detective for as many years as I, Jerry Browning, have been, you'll get just as suspicious as I am. It was about one o'clock in the afternoon, and I was doing what detectives are always supposed to be doing, but seldom really do. I was shadowing a man. There was no real reason for me to follow Angie Brennan. He wasn't wanted for anything that I knew about, and even if he was a hoodlum and safecracker, he had a perfect right to walk along a busy street in broad daylight. Just the same, I was curious, and I don't like hoodlums. So... I risked my life ducking through traffic in order to get across the street and keep Angie in sight. Two blocks further down at 632 Central Avenue, Angie entered the lobby of the Cornwall Arms, a large apartment hotel. As I watched through the door, Angie stopped before reaching the elevators and pressed the push button of a door opening out the lobby. The door opened a few seconds later, and he went on in. I walked into the hotel... and stopped before the door through which Angie had passed. The nameplate on it said, Dr. Carter Trotter, ear, nose, and throat, by appointment only. So Angie was visiting a doctor. No wonder he'd gone there so openly. I turned away, and as I did, Dr. Trotter's door opened, and out walked Dave Angora, who, when last I heard of him, was doing five years at the state pen. In the next hour, I saw five more of the toughest criminals in town either enter or leave through that doorway. Dr. Trotter, ear, nose, and throat specialist, seemed to have one of the strangest collections of patients in town. When I followed a hoodlum to a doctor's office, I discovered that some of the most savage crooks in town were beating a path to his door. I made a few careful inquiries at the hotel desk. Dr. Trotter? Why, yes, he's been with us for years and years. One of the best men in his field. There's the old gentleman now. I turned to catch a glimpse of a small, erect man with white hair and mustache, leave the office, and walk briskly out of the hotel. I followed Dr. Trotter outside, around the corner past the central bank building to a side street where Dr. Trotter unlocked a parked car and drove off. There didn't seem any point in following him further, so I caught a cab and went on home. But I kept wondering why should seven hoodlums suddenly all patronize the same doctor? I made a phone call to the head of the county medical association. What he told me simply confirmed the hotel clerk's endorsement. Dr. Trotter was a highly respected member of his profession. The next morning, I dropped in at police headquarters for a chat with Lieutenant Dawson of Homicide. Angie Brannon, Dave Angora, Pete Filsom, Tommy Welsh, Little Jacinta, Steve Marcus, Joe Danby. That's quite a list of cutthroats, Jerry. What have they got in common besides larceny? That's what I hope you can tell me, Dawson. Have any of them been involved in a shooting lately, maybe needing illegal treatment of wounds? Dawson looked at me queerly. No, Jerry. Not that I know about. I got up. Okay. Thanks, Dawson. Wait a second, Jerry. What's going on? Dawson, if I told you, you'd laugh at me. I drove downtown to the Cornwall Arms Hotel, found a parking place around the corner a few doors beyond the bank. Then I walked back to the hotel and started watching. I watched for hours. Not a single one of the hoodlums showed up. Finally, I went into the hotel. My dear sir, this is Thursday. Dr. Trotter never sees anybody Thursday afternoons. He's at the hospital. He gets here about five, sees patients until eight or later. But really, he won't see you without an appointment. I went back to my car, found a ticket on it for parking too close to a bank, and went on to my office. At five o'clock, I phoned Dr. Trotter. Got no answer. I tried the number every ten minutes until just before six o'clock. Hello, Dr. Trotter. My name is Jerry Browning. I've got a terrible throat, great deal of pain. Could you possibly see me tonight? 
Uh, no, Doctor. Tomorrow won't do. I've got to see you tonight. I... I... Dr. Turner? Doctor... I was talking into a dead phone. He'd hung up. I sat there staring at the phone. Then I made another call. Hello, Dawson. Jerry Browning. Dawson, I think there's monkey business of some kind at the office of Dr. Carter Trotter in the Cornwall Arms Hotel. I'm going there now. Meet me outside the hotel. 632 Central Avenue. Make it in one hour. I walked to the hotel, pressed the button at Dr. Trotter's door. Nobody answered, but I kept my finger on the button. About a full minute later, the door slowly opened. I walked in and found myself looking into the muzzle of a gun in the hand of Angie Brannon. Okay, white guy, so you had to come in. Go ahead, walk. Angie prodded me with a gun toward a small room. There were four people in the room. Dr. Trotter, two women, and a young man. Angie waved me to a chair. You can sit here with the rest of them, Browning. Dr. Trotter looked at me helplessly. I sat down as Angie backed away to the door and leaned against it. There was a sound somewhere that I couldn't identify. I listened for it, strained my ears, and then I knew. It was the sound of bricks being pried loose. The hotel was around the corner from the central bank, backed against the bank. And a gang was tunneling from this office into the bank. The gang had come here one at a time for treatment during the day so that their arrival tonight wouldn't be particularly noted or suspected. For over an hour, I sat and listened to the faint sounds. Then, Angie jumped at the sound of the buzzer. Don't nobody move or make a sound. But the buzzing didn't let up, and finally... Browning, you walk in front of me. You're going to open the door, and you'll know what happens if you get funny. Go ahead. I walked slowly outside, put my hand on the doorknob, then yanked the door open and dropped to my hands and knees. Duck, Dawson, duck! I was the one who had to worry about ducking because Dawson and a police squad came in with guns blazing and Angie went down with a dozen slugs in him. Rounding up the rest of the gang from the hole into which they dug themselves was easy. There was no fight in them. Dawson explained... After talking to you this morning, I figured I'd better bring a squad along to keep my appointment with you. I nodded weakly. You're so right, Dawson. But how'd you figure out what was going on in here? Well, to tell you the strict truth, Jerry, I didn't. I thought Dr. Trotter was working a plastic surgery racket, changing crooks' faces. But when you hollered, I started shooting. Think we'll get a reward? We did get a reward. $500 $500 was my share of it. Not bad pay for being curious. Like I said, when seven crooks get a sore throat all at the same time, it's a sure sign that honest people are liable to get a severe pain in the pocketbook.